Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Green Tea Room. I'm glad you guys could join me this evening. And um, like Nathan said in the chat, make sure y'all hit that double type. Give me my gems. Give my jewels, honey. Okay? <laughs> and I'm on time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys are doing good today. I have a good show for you guys. Um, so today we had a really dope discussion this morning. One of my friends on Facebook, he sent me this link to this new ABC special. Um, it was like a news broadcast. And when I tell you people have been dragging ABC News, the comment section is dragging them. The dislikes are heavier than the likes. People are tired of the mainstream media and their BS. So what went down is that basically they decided to do a special, okay, on polyamory relationships. And they titled it Polyamory Increases in Popularity as Record Numbers Flock to Dating Apps. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Let me go ahead and hit play. So I went ahead and I, I shared it with the discourse. We were talking about it this morning. I'm going to play a snippet. Hopefully you guys can hear it. I'm bring my face close to the computer. There's, a, there's this old white lady out here, honey, named Rev. And Rev is Polly Amory. She thinks she's that girl. She says she's the baddest chick in Brooklyn. Okay? She's single and ready to spread herself thin, honey. So y'all go ahead and hear this real quick. I am looking for Saturday night orgies and white picket fences. Like, <laughs> so right now I am currently in a polyamorous relationship. I have an amazing partner who I love so much. We've been together just over two years um, and it's polyamorous and he's married and has a family and has two children. After being cooped up, quarantining, many Americans are ready to get out and mingle. As we're coming out of the pandemic and we're wanting to connect back with people and meet new people, I'm definitely more open and curious about new relationships and new friend groups and all kinds of newness and seeing like what the world has to offer. I feel like dating apps do provide a way to find like-minded people because I can pretty quickly tell if you're going to be a kinky type of person that's going to be into what I'm into. Throughout the pandemic, the number of users on dating apps hit an all-time high. The top 20 dating apps had a cumulative average of 17 million daily users, 2 million more than a year before, with one option in particular seeing a wild surge. We had a threesome and I just never left. Excuse me. Did this conversation involve this? The app Field says between 2020 and 2021, it has seen a 670% increase in singles listing threesomes at the top of their wish list. According to a study done by Kenzie Institute researcher Dr. LaMiller, that's also the most common sexual fantasy amongst Americans, with some 95% of men and 87% of women having fantasized about sex with multiple partners. In our recent survey, we actually found that 52% of Americans, a majority, said they tried something new in the bedroom during the pandemic. And the people who tried new things are actually much happier than those who didn't. I think that's also part of where this interest is coming from in threesomes and being a little bit kinkier. It's just a way of interjecting that novelty to try and get the spark back in the relationship and keep it going. All right, so that was just some of it. Y'all gotta watch the video. It's a trip. So they're trying to make it like this new hip fun thing. Oh, everybody's doing it. Oh, the most popular thing on dating apps is threesomes and, you know, swapping and exchanging partners. But nobody talked about swapping condoms and bodily fluids. But that's a whole nother show, okay? Now, what I found very funny is as you watch this, there was this was not journalistic integrity at all. They didn't really dig into what polyamory was about. Um, as we watched the Lady Rev, there was like a sadness that overtook her. Cause I'm getting, I'm like, okay, I'm not getting polyamory teas from you, Rev. I'm getting side chick mistress teas. And then she goes on to say that, you know, her hope, right? Her hopes and goals is that she eventually gets a husband and has children. 
Mind you, the person that she's supposing this polyamory relationship with, he is married and he has children. But nobody interviews the wife. We don't get to meet the husband. <laughs> Y'all got me cracking up in the chat. I'm like, does the wife know about this polyamory situation? Bitch, are you just the mistress and the side chick? Because something ain't cleaning the buttermilk. Because the way she was talking, I want a husband. I want children. And I'm like, but I thought you want to be the biggest freak in Brooklyn. Like, it, it got to the point where I got uncomfortable listening to her because I'm like, she sounds like she wants to skin the wife and wear her skins. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like on some Silence of the Lamb type, type shit. Like, you're trying to skin the wife and be her. You want a husband and kids. You want what they have. And she even said in the interview that she's jealous of that. And I'm like, well, this doesn't sound like a healthy, happy <laughs> situationship you feel me so I just feel like they're trying to push this and what really bothered me with this portrayal of everything they're saying that this is happening in record numbers through dating apps well if you guys remember the last green room show that we had we talked about the fact that they're trying to start teaching kids about dating apps in you know different school districts but particularly the, the Wisconsin school district um, they were teaching the third graders about Grinder and things like that. So I find it very interesting that they're trying to teach kids about dating apps, and they're also making it look like this is the coolest, newest thing in town, being polyamory and being in multiple relationships and being a throuple. And the way they kind of shot this and edited this, it's more glamorized. It's not really educational. It's just more glamorized. You know, there's the music and the dancing and the clubbing and, oh, my God, we're in this three-way relationship and none of us ever get jealous. And they're also incorporating TikTok as well. And we know that most kids are on TikTok. So I feel like this is not really so much to educate older people about another lifestyle. It's more or less to make it glamorous to the younger generation. So I wasn't feeling the propaganda that was all through this. And especially being that you could tell this old white lady was not happy. OK, she literally said in there that she wants a husband and children. Well, good luck on that venture while you're busy fucking somebody else's husband. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it, it just to me, I just got side chick vibes. I didn't get polyamory from her. OK, so this was a very interesting like news report. Like I said, people are dragging ABC. But one thing I'm noticing is that it seems like monogamy is no longer like, I'm not even gonna say push. It just doesn't seem like it's the cool thing anymore. Like just to be in a monogamous relationship, be faithful, things like that. It's like, oh, that's old school. Everything is being pushed towards threesomes and you know, just alternative things. And like I said, I have no issues with what consenting adults do. Never have, that is your business. But I do have an issue when I feel like they're trying to push things towards younger people. You know, when you have younger kids talking about they're in a throuple and you don't even know what it is to be in love with a solo person one-on-one, -on -one. you know? So on top of that, then we also had the situation that happened today and I had did a podcast about it earlier, the whole Dr. Dre situation with his wife, Nicole, and how now a lot of people are trying to use that as an excuse as to why marriage is a bad thing and men always get the raw end of the deal in marriages because they have to pay so much alimony and things like that if the relationship sours. So I wanted to have this show to hear from you all, get y'all's thoughts and opinion on, you know, just all this stuff that's being said about relationships. Um, you know, just how do you guys feel about the whole ABC special that people are dragging them about? How do y'all feel about the whole Dr. Dre and Nicole situation? So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it. I'm going to go ahead and take some calls. And the way to give me diamonds, I appreciate child. I'm up to 78. You just tap on my picture twice. So thank you in the chat for writing that because I wasn't sure myself. So let me go ahead here. Let's bring some people to the stage. Um, Let's see here. Let me bring on Livy T. Livy T, you're coming on the stage. Oh, hey. Can you guys hey. hear me? Oh, there we go. Yes, we can hear you. Hey, how Hello. are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. Definitely. So this, this whole polyamorous thing is just, it just blows my mind because I I was in a relationship like that for about a year and mm -hmm. I, it really upsets me that people just don't understand 
that this is more than just sex. This is like, it, it's a relationship. It's emotional. And people don't understand that part. If, if you can't love one person, how are you going to love more than one person? It, like, right. I don't understand that. They're just, people are just out there to do this so they can sleep with more than one person. And, I'm and like, I that's think not that's how, how it it's being pushed because the people I know who've been involved in like polyamory relationships, it's been really serious for them. It's yeah. like a, it's like a situation where, you know, they are in a real relationship. There's rules, there's regulations. You know what I mean? Right. They have their own boundaries. But the way I watch that article, it's like a free for all mm. hookup. Right. That's and that's not what a, it's polyamorous relationship, not a threesome. You know, there's more than that. And then people try to bring their kids into this. And um, you know what? My fiance is here too. His uh, best friend literally sounds just like the girl from ABC. Oh, Desi. Hey, T. Hello, T. Hey, how are hi. You? How, I'm good. How about you? I am good, honey. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I'm here. <laughs> let me tell you about my best friend, girl. She she has two kids, right? And I knew her from high school, and she's always been like open about like love and sex and relationships, or whatever. Which I never judged her on because you know she was young. So, but she recently hit me up and was like, um. She had a childhood friend that was, he got, he he's married and he got two other girlfriends that live in another state, but she was just so giddy about the fact of just having sex with him because he has multiple partners. And I was trying to tell her, I'm like, yo, like you having sex with, first of all, she wants him to get her pregnant. So I'm mm-hmm. like, why would you do that? First of all, you got two kids to think about that you can barely take care of. And I'm not trying to drag her. It's just like, she's not thinking straight. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm just like, you not thinking about your kids, first of all, and you don't know if this man is crazy or, you know what I mean? If he gets you pregnant, he don't take care of the child. It's just like, she's just looking at it as sex. She's not looking at the emotional connection about it. Not to mention, mm-hmm. he hasn't had sex with his wife since they got married. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now you over here spilling too much tea. So the man got his wife. <laughs> He's not giving no peen to the wife. So the wife he can't get no peen. But Girl, everybody he ain't else giving is, no peen is, to is the wife. up on that. This no peen at all. And this is like he the other two girlfriends that he have live in a whole nother state. But he's having sex with them. And I think when I talked to her last, he was talking about getting a divorce from his wife because his wife has a boyfriend. So it's just like, don't none of them know what they want to do. So it's just like, why are you even, if you want to be single and fuck, just, just do that. Like, I don't understand. Right. And that's what I don't understand. I'm not knocking nobody. If you want to be a whore and, and run the streets and spread it <laughs> wide and, and dip it low, that is hey, your business, man or woman, right? But why right. get into commitments? Why make a, why make a vow before God and the church and your family to be married if you want to have a girlfriend in different states? Like that is not polyamory. That's just you being fast and trying to spread right. it all o- all over the Americas. Mm-hmm. You know? Honey, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> that is, cra- and she really wants to end up pregnant by him. Why is that? Did she tell you? Is it because he's just cute, or it's just something to do? Well, she said this is what she told me. She was like, when they were childhood friends, like when they were teenagers, they had already had sex. But she was like, she. I don't know. I don't know. She, like I said, she's always been open about sex. Like she don't mm-hmm. care who it's with. But I think it was just he's a he's a good looking guy, and she just needed some pain. So she was just like, if he gets me pregnant, he gets me pregnant. And I just looked at her like, are you serious? Are you dead ass right now? Like, right now, somebody in the chat they're saying this. Uh, Sarah, she's saying, I hate how monogamy is so demonized. Like people have their preferences. But I've been seeing some monogamy shaming within the community, especially in the LGBTQ community. And this is coming from someone who's bisexual. So do you feel like there's a sort of monogamy shaming? Because I remember I went through that on YouTube where people were telling me that I was sex negative. And I'm like, how am I sex negative? Because I believe in monogamy. Like, it, it's OK, you know, to be with one person at a time. You don't have to be with one person your whole life. But I don't think that you necessarily have to sleep with everybody either. Right. right. So do you feel like there's like a there's like a shaming almost if you're not willing to like 
be wild and crazy and just, you know, right. hook up randomly with people. That's the thing now. Everything's so over sexualized and it's in to do it with everybody, everything, with nothing. Who cares about diseases? Like nobody's thinking anymore. Mm-hmm. Just out there having babies, getting stuff, and they don't care. Yeah, like it's really crazy. And I feel and I'm not gonna say it's just the younger generation, but I feel like it's more geared towards the younger, like, you know, 25 and under they're Mm -hmm. very much free like literally they'll go to a party and hook with somebody that same day go to the party the next day hook up with somebody and it's just like again yeah and it's like ain't y'all scared of soul ties like they're not and that's all they see that's all they see (laughs) in the news and on tv that's what they're perpetuating they see it on instagram everybody looks a certain way and they're super sexualized and you gotta not have any clothes on and it's like that's that's not what you gotta do so but now you said so now you said you were in a poly relationship for a year. Mm-hmm. So what made you get into that relationship and then why I, did it end? I think it was because I had friends that I had known before that were in a poly relationship and mm-hmm. I saw how they were and I was kind of like my fiance's best friend. I was pretty open with my sexuality. So I was like, you know, I kind of want to try it and I wanted different things in my marriage. It wasn't really going the way I wanted it to. So mm-hmm. I had talked about it with my husband and we had talked about, uh, you know, being with one of like somebody that I knew it was another girl and, um, it, it was okay for a while, but like I said, it's really hard to have that emotional bond with different people. And I don't mm. think I could handle that. That was really, it was like a lot for me. I thought I could, but I think it was more, I was so used to the sexual part of it that Mm -hmm. I just like my heart wasn't in it like I I would get start to get jealous even though I thought I could do it in the beginning I was like cool we would all do stuff together Mm. but then like at a certain point I was like I I don't think I can do this like and I'm glad that you said that because Mm -hmm. so many people glamorize it and they try to ignore the human aspect and that's one thing about human nature like the old saying goes you know uh two's company three's a crowd after a while You know, and and of course, it's exciting at first because I mean, I've had friends who were swingers and done all types of crazy shit in their marriage. No judging. So it's like at first it's fun because it's it's something because the sexual aspect, right? Because sex is fun. It feels good. And especially if you go both ways, you know, you get your cake and eat it, too. Right. Exactly. And I'm so like, hey, you know, we right. (laughs) So we get that. But then after a while, when that person is still there. And they're living with you. And every time you turn around, they're right there. And they're where are you there. about to go? Can I come with you? No, right. I want my space. Exactly. So that's where it starts to be bothersome for people. Right. And it was also the way that I saw him with her. It was mm. like, I started to be like, mm, he doesn't exactly do that with me. Like, what's but, going on? Like, do you like me ooh. better? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, mm, mm. I don't know about this anymore. Now, like, remember what I said in my live up. stream? Do you remember that, that live stream I did about the BBC unicorn? Mm, remember? No, I don't know if he caught that. Now, remember, what I, did I say, Chad? I see everybody in the chat. <laughs> now, what did I say? I said, everybody wants to be down for the freaky shit. Until mm-hmm. your significant other starts moaning in a way you ain't never heard a moan. Yeah, that's or until that up. man what? puts it on well, your I girl in a way that you ain't put it on her and she's moaning and screaming. You're like, damn, my wife uh-huh. never did that for me. <laughs> right. Like, Talk about mm, it. I, I'm not feeling this anymore. And it was just, it was like stuff like that and just like little simple stuff, things that she did. I was like, I mean, I do that too, but why do you seem like you're more into when she does it? Like, mm. It's something about this. And then we just started drifting apart and we just start, stopped feeling each other and ended up he being with her and I went on my way. Oh, Lord. So he don't went with the polyamory that y'all bought into the relationship. He did. Why does that happen? So, that's what happened to one of my friends. They bought yep. the girl into the relationship and now he's not married to the girl and she's out here mad and bitter and niggas ain't shit. Well, why did you bring her to the bedroom? <laughs> I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> Luckily, I... Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.